Okay, everybody, welcome back, and let's go on and get the analysis started. So we had the euro support for yesterday coming in here at um, 643. We did make it down here to 640. Um, as I said, overall, I think that before all said and done, we're probably going to have to come down here to test this 609 uh, eventually. I think we had that marked off here yesterday, but we weren't looking for that to be hit. Yeah, so it's right there, 609. Uh, before all said and done, and it doesn't mean we couldn't go a little bit lower. We'll have to see how everything's stacking up at that time. Um, so let's take a look. Resistance is going to be right there, 697 for today. So what is this here? You can still look at this 716, but I think they would slap them back a little bit here. So six, we'll say 696 for resistance for today. And like I said, we look at everything on a little bit shorter term basis. So it doesn't mean we couldn't get a little bit above that, but I think that they'd get some pushback. And this 643 worked out really well, but... I don't think we're going to know 609 today. I'm just saying I think before all said no, we'll eventually get there. But if they were to come back here to test, I think it's a 624. We'll call it 622 for today if they were to try and come down here and test. So we want to – this worked out well here, but let's adjust it slower. Yeah, Jack says gold is trying to break higher again. Just saying, yeah, of course it is because the bonds are doing – the bonds are, are on their highs. You know, that's what I'm saying. So even though we've reached this area here, uh, yeah, Luca Luca says if bonds go higher, we could see UJ, uh, you know, the yen get to 110 soon. Yeah, it could. I mean, 10, I think it's 1050 is that number. But, I mean, we'll we'll take a quick look, see real quick, just so everybody's all on the same page. Um, look at bonds. They're on their highs here. Now, we said the next real target is 5304, but that's what's given the gold the, the upside. I mean, even though gold's... Is extended. Look at this. It's pushing higher on the bonds. And you see here the gold is. And we'll try and back this up a little bit for some perspective. Right in here. You see that? Doesn't mean we couldn't punch it up a little bit higher. But we got this good little zone in here. And. Uh, We hit the 661 percent. We got this 4110. I mean, it's you know, it's. I think it's it's ready for a pause. You know, respite. I mean, I told the guys in the chat room yesterday. Uh, you know, some were looking to, to stop. When we talked about this, this 34, and they were looking to you know attempt to short it, and you know, it was a it was an okay area, but I said you know. I still think there's this market, you know, looking at it from a price structure standpoint, still wants 12.39. Well, here we are, 12.40. Now they popped up there in the overnight session to 40.50, and then they backed down here, and now they come back up here. If bonds want to pause, that'll allow the gold to go in and come back. But that's what's giving it the extra juice here. Even though we've come into our zone, you know, here was our 50%. Here's our zone. Nicked it right to the tick, literally to the tick. And then you drop back all the way down. I even said about that 29 being a good area. We mentioned the 26, but I said that 29. I'd share that with the guys in the chat room and also the wise trade alerts, and that held the market. And then we made another return trip up to 37.50. Then we came down, we dilly-dallied, and went, made this run up here yesterday, and it looked like, okay, this market could slide. 
But like I said, hey, look, it looks like it's set up for a move eventually to, to 39. So um, let's go with this here. Let's get back to the uh, to our charts. So we just did the we just did the euro. We put 622 for today with 696 on the upside. Let's move into the Kevin, which has had a pretty nice big run. Look at that. It blew past what we were looking at for resistance on this idea but from Cunliffe that maybe they should go in and raise rates. Uh, and I think really what we did, we just, we just hit a lot of stops because people got very bearish. And we talked about this, this support zone here, this 2262. I think people got too bearish. And so when that happened, it opened the door. Once we got above this level, they were just hitting all kinds of stops. So for today, I'd say the resistance would be here, which would be Twenty-five thirty and support Let's say 2418, so we'll move that up here. See that here? Say 2418 for support. Yeah. Heck of a move by cable. So let's go now to the Aussie dollar. And I just saved my work. Don't want to lose any of it. So here we go. Aussie dollar. Wow, we're really hanging around here. Uh, not a whole lot of change. 7560, I think we put up here. Oh, that's support. So 70, 7684 resistance, 7560 support, and we're just stuck smack dab in the middle. Not a whole lot happening here. We're going to stay with that. There's, there's no change here. We're just stuck in this range. So we'll see how this plays out. So no change here on the Aussie dollar. So let's go and move ahead, clip along to the Kiwi. And the Kiwi is probably going to be the same thing. 72, 75, 73 and a quarter. 72, 25 is a bias pivot. 73 and a quarter is what I put for the resistance. And we did make it to 73 and a quarter, it looks like, and then we got pushed back, or maybe it's just right in here. And we're trying to amble up again. We're riding this trend line. Nothing of any real significance here either. It's just we're just stuck, essentially. So once again on a short term basis, I mean it does look like it wants to try for a stab up here. So we'll move this just a hair higher. You have to go with this. So that we have to move that to for today. Seventy three forty three on the upside.
Okay. So we had 31.14 and 32.18. Okay, look, that worked out pretty good. Look at that. Well, actually, you know what? I think they were there yesterday when we were coming in. So um, 32.18 on the upside, 31.14. No real change here either. So nothing's really changed here. I think that eventually you'll come back down to test this area and then it'll open the door for them to try and work a little bit higher because this market's, you know, pretty oversold. I think that all things being equal, if that plays out, because we're pretty oversold, so anybody that was short is going to be trying to buy against 31, 31, and 31, 14, then they may try and eventually take this area out, get up to 32, 56, and then we'll have to see how what the market looks like at that point. But for right now, we're oversold. Um, I think that any pullbacks in this 31, 31 to 31, 14 are going to be supported as people that are short are going to try and try and uh, you know cover those shorts. And then I think from there uh, we'd be able to work higher, take out these highs, maybe run out of gas around here. But like I said, we'll have to see what things look like at that time. So pretty simple in the sense that nothing's changing. All this is taken care of for right now. We're, we're making some pretty good progress because some of these markets haven't changed a whole lot. Bonds are still near the highs, which is holding this, this gold market up, even though it's quite stretched. But these bonds, and the bonds have an option. It probably push up the gold, but it has the, the ability on these bonds. It's looking like they can get to 5304, which is going to be our key. Uh, we're going to take a little thing, a couple things out of, uh, out of the usual rotation, and we'll move into the bond market right now because that's what's driving this market. So let's go into the bond market and do some analysis there. Look at that. We're on our highs here in the bond market. So let's see if we see any resistance here. Talking about 53 or 4 here. Let's see what we see here on a 30 minute. Fifty-three ten looks pretty formidable. Let's see if there's something before then. You can see about right here, like, well, that 52.28. So we do have a little level there. A 
right there. We're going to say that the resistance is going to come in at 5230, 5230, and that's going to confluence with 5228 being the 78%. I mean, we're way overstretched here. It doesn't mean we can't just pull back here. Generally, when you take out, when you come to one fib, you don't stop at the next fib. You go even further, which I think is once again going to leave this door open for 53.10. But uh, we can take a respite here. We're just way overextended. I think they're just squeezing a couple people in. I think the way I'd look at it to me would be. They think everybody's saying, well, there's a target. Here's 52.28. There's a level there. And everybody thinks, okay, let, let's see if it'll get up there. I could be wrong, but my thing, my thoughts would be we're going to run out of gas here, and that'll allow a pullback to about to here, well, probably like 08. That's what I think. I think it's going to run out of gas right around here, and it won't make it to this target. But that's the target. I mean, you know, that's what they're going to be targeting for now because you've got a, you've got a level there. And you got this fib. My guess is before it's all said and done, we'll probably make a run 53.10. But I think we'll take a pause at this point. But our resistance is going to be 52.30. I don't think we get up here today. I think it'll be 52.30. So let me go and mark that off. Because this is what's driving the bus today. Now for support, hmm, say right there. Which would be fifty two oh two. So you want to keep an eye on these bonds because that's going to tell you what's, what's going to happen in gold. Will gold take a respite now? Personally, I think the gold's going to—I mean, the bonds going to stop in here. I don't think they'll be able to make it that 52.28. Once again, our our level is going to be 52.30 for our resistance, but I don't think they're going to make it here. I think we're going to have to come back down, maybe come to 10. Do whatever they do, with then eventually, you know, try and maybe retest this 08. Eventually, I think they'll get up there that 5303, but not on this run. And I don't even think it'll make it to the 5228 for now. Um, there might be a lot of people wishing and hoping that they do and think that they will, but I'd be kind of surprised if it just makes it up right here, right now. We're a little bit, so we're stretched in the bond market too. Although it's got, technically, it looks good because we've had good pullbacks. Where they've been tested, and then people make make runs. I mean, you saw it here and here and here and here. So it's, it's got good technical juice behind it. Yeah, Amanda says uh, dollar yen is a possible bear flag on the four hour that could project to sub one ten two. Yeah, if these bonds get to fifty three ten, I'll tell you what, that dollar yen is going to be in one heck of a hurt. Uh, we'll go and move into that. I know Amanda has been playing the dollar yen really well from a longer term basis, or medium term basis, I should say. Uh, let's go back into the two hours. So there's our support and resistance on 30-year. We went a little out of what, the way we usually do things. So now we're going to move into the dollar-swiss. Okay, so let's see what's shaking on the dollar-swiss.
So we're just hanging around this this uh, trend line. Our resistance and support was 99.52 and par 18. There's par 18. There's 99.52 down here. Or was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, there it is. 99.52. Par 18. So we're stuck in a very, very tight range here. I mean, really tight. Uh, we talked about all the work. The reason I left this here because that reminds us. Remember, we talked about how this market can move higher because we've done a lot of work in here. So if it breaks above this trend line, I think we can get up to that 120. Mm. Yeah, Luca Luca says Bank of England's Cunliffe uh, hitting the wires in five minutes. If he echoes yesterday's comments from Forbes, and he's talking about Kristen Forbes. Cable may come out screaming again. Well, I think that's a good point, although I think the damage was done already. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so I think you already spooked the stops. So now people are like, oh, you know, they're licking their wounds. It doesn't mean that if he came out positive, we couldn't push a little bit higher, but you wouldn't see this. You see what I'm saying? This is a lot of people getting, they got short and late, and they're hanging on, and then they just started getting blasted out. But thanks again, Luke, Luke. And so if we see any action in the cable, we'll know where that's coming from. As you said, uh, Bank of England's Cunliffe on the wires. Um, yeah, we're just a few minutes away. Yeah, get 1,300 GMT. Um, but anyway, this shows us that we've done a lot of work here. And then we have this trend line. Usually I don't do too much with trend lines, but you can see here that you know, if we can break higher, we'll move to this par 61, probably come back a little bit, and eventually get to 120 if, if we're just going to see a full-on assault or full-on onslaught by the dollar. But we got to get there first. So, you know, it could easily pull back a little bit. But those resistance and support levels are going to continue to remain the same as Swissy. So some of the analysis today has been relatively easy considering what we've been looking at. Um... We'll spend just a little bit more time here, almost time for a break. But, yeah, from a longer scope, you can see here, when you look at it, you're like, wow, what a, what a pullback. And, you know, and right now we're on the edges of this trend line. If we can break up, I think we can make a move. We'll definitely come up to this par 61 and then pull back a little bit, and then we could eventually come to 120. That would probably confluence about the time that the euro would be going to brand new lows. Although the dollar Swiss has kind of traded in its, its own fashion, but it, it, like I said, that could spark that. It would, we'd really be sailing. So we'll have to see what happens. I think eventually, as I said, eventually I think that the euro will get to 609 before all is said and done. Uh, bonds are struggling here. You, you know, I was telling you all, I think they we're going to put in a, a short-term top right now. I just don't see them getting to 5228. Could be wrong. I've been wrong before, but I'm saying is I, I think we'll see more a bit of a respite here, which is kind of keep a little bit of a lid on gold for now. But you can see here now, you look at all the work we've done here, that'll open the door for us to move higher here. So when we get back, um, we will move on to the dollar yen. So the dollar yen will be next up on tap. We knew we were talking about that 1165 for a ways, and Amanda says that a bear flag looks like this is going to move to 110. Yeah, we'll, we'll get pretty close to that if we get these bonds up here to this 5304. So we'll be back, and thanks for joining us here on the uh, Morning Edge.